Hello everybody. That is an update on Karel Kabatnadze's um, device and also on Tesla's fuel-less generator. So I went a little bit more down, dig, dig out a patent Karel Kabatnadze did file in 2008 and had also um, a good look on a video where he and a bunch of other Russians did um, bury a radiator, a car radiator and used as a second earth line um, a water tap from the ground. So a couple of things you need to consider in order to get that working. First of all, the system is a serious connection. When the load is connected, the complete system needs to be synchronized to the load. You cannot add or you cannot take add a load, otherwise you will change the frequency of the system and it will not work anymore. That's the first downside. So you need actually to isolate the load. You have to you need to have a translation, you need to have a transformer of some sort, but you cannot draw current from it continuously in a, in a very uh, in variable fashion. You have to use a constant load in order to synchronize with the system. So let me explain here his patent. This patent he did file in 2008 it's on my website under patents available for you to download. It has a couple of components. So the first is an entry component. So he has his um, battery. Then he has an inverter, just a normal 12 volt inverter. Then he has a control box here. He calls it a switch. Then he has a couple of filters, capacitors, and so on, and it goes into the primary. So what it doesn't show here is that the primary is actually connected to the secondary that's on top of each other. So on the secondary, the secondary has an earth connection, which goes and again into a filter system where the frequency is adjusted, and the frequency goes then to number 11. 11 elf is, is a current enhancer. Into 12, again a filter system with capacitors and out to the load. So you have two earth connections. One earth connection from the battery going to the ground. You have a second earth connection going through the secondary out in here. And this is also earth to the ground. So what you see is only one ground here and actually it's in fact two grounds. So I have, have made enhancement now on my system. So I spent a little bit more time and see what I, what I come up with. First of all I did spend a great deal of a, of a very, very efficient crowning system which is working inside. So you have a sender rod here and then have on the outside four 6mm uh, copper rods as well. So that is 10mm in the middle. I changed then also the primary. So the primary has his uh, required turns. Course is extended from the secondary. On the other side this comes out, so you have I use some plates of, of copper and so on. And this system is far more efficient. So my measurement for efficiency is how fast can I charge my capacitor, so that's my first trial. And the frequency is a bit lower on this one, but the power going through the system is higher. Let's have a look. So you saw a picture. I haven't started anything at the moment, so it's one volt on a capacitor. I would start now as a function generator. It it loads it right way up. So it's no power at all on the system, so it's it draws a lot of power already, and there is no power literally into the capacitor. Capacitor is here again, as you see. You have a um, germanium um, bridge rectifier to the ground and you have your 200 volt capacitor here. So without me even starting my little driver here powered from my little bench power supply it goes up to 3 volt. Now let's start the power supply. Let's have a look. So that's a tremendous improvement. So it's actually 
max already. This is just 53 volt and 55 volt only after a couple of seconds. So that's 10 times faster than before. It took me about 20 30 seconds or longer before I reached the same power level be uh, than before. What do I have here? 6.8 volt and 60 milliamp. So that's also a big achievement by a factor almost of 10. I need far less power to charge it much faster. So that's a very, very efficient system and the frequency as you can see is 1.2 megahertz. Let's have a look here on frequency. So the voltage is approximately the same but I draw much more current from the earth. Look of the change of the amplitude. So I have my 6 volt, 6 milliamp. And start up. Amplitude goes up. That's 20, that's 30 volt, that's 40 volt. I'm a 50 volt now. Let's spark it down. 30 volt, 40 volt, 50 volt. Five, six seconds. Six volt, 50 milliampere. That's great. Let's see how fast it charges. I charge up now, start now. At 50 I give it a bash here. Yep. quite nice so it charges very very fast 6 volt 50 milliampere I did also use and tested an NST now and a MOF. It's very very difficult to start NST because the voltage in the system is too high to be contained. So when you use a load, the load, the contacts of the load have to be quite far away or you need to transform it down. So I had no luck with any bulbs I used with the NST because the voltage was far too high it was sparking over all over the place. I used them, a couple of them, the sparks went through. So, NST is not ideal to use for that system because you have to think about what you do later on when you want to use a load so you have to transform it down you have to step it down so there's no way around it but with a MOF you're within the range of 2000 volts that's not such a big problem so let's do it a try where I use um, a remote switch a short switch or yeah just a little release switch we can see at the moment we have 3 volt I press the button and it goes down to zero. Let's put some lights here. So let's take that as a measurement. Well, at the moment the function generator is started. 6.6 volt. Let's have a look. Current 550 milliamp. 
here you go 50 milliamp it does not charge it does not change at all I release I haven't timed it yet but you can count till 10 probably 7, 8, 9, I think below 10 seconds and it will be fully charged. And the amazing thing is that has no influence on a current. Continuously charges and what I realized as well is even if I increase the power, let's say I put in 30 watt, it does not change anything except that the voltage goes slightly a bit higher. but the charging frequency does not increase. That means we have a completely different balanced system here which does not rely on current as a factor for charging or for driving a load. So that is interesting and that's something I have not seen before. So as you can see 6.6 volt 5 milliamp charge again and that does not change. It stays at 6.6 .6 and 5 milliamp, 50 milliamp, sorry. It's amazing.